How many of you guys have, have never been here for one of our baptism services? Raise your hand today. We'll get ready because things are about to get really exciting. Uh, we love to celebrate life change. That's what this church is all about. This church is about life change. It's not about religion. It's about relationship with Jesus. And, um, you know, I, I think about all of the celebrating that's going to be happening tonight. Uh, raise your hand if you're going to be at some sort of Super Bowl celebration tonight, maybe at someone's house or you're hosting. Come on, raise your hands. All right, and on the count of three, I want you to yell for what team you're going to be cheering for. One, two, three. I heard some eagles. There's a lone one in here. <laughs> I need security <laughs> to escort some people out of the room. <laughs> It's going to be so much fun tonight. We're going to gather. We're going to have good food, and there's going to be yelling at the TV and just having a great time. There's going to be a lot of celebration, and there's going to be a lot of celebration this morning, but we're going to have to put our colors aside. We're going to have to recognize that we are Team Jesus today, and we're going to be, we're going to be cheering for the same team as we celebrate life change today, but you know, we're not alone. We're not, we're not celebrating alone this morning. I'm not just talking about our online family. We are surrounded by those who have fallen asleep before us and a host of angels this morning as we see these people go down in the water. We're going to be surrounded by heavenly hosts. And I just want you to envision what that looks like with your mind. Listen to what Jesus said in Luke 15 and 10. He says, I tell you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who yeah. repents. Yeah. Let me read that again. I want you to imagine what that looks like in your mind because um, most of us have not been to heaven before, <laughs> but you can imagine. I think some of us think we know how to party now, but I, I, I think that we're all sorely mistaken. I think when we get to heaven, we're going to realize what a real party looks like yeah. with the celebration and the praise of God's presence and celebrating King Jesus. He says, I tell you, there is joy. Say joy. joy. There is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. Right. I remember this last, one of the last baptism services, um, this uh, wonderful godly woman came up to us after the service and said, I have to share with you what God showed me during the baptism service. She said, when Every person would go down in the water. She said, it's almost like the room just became silent. And she said, I was almost just taken into heaven overlooking this huge stadium, this huge coliseum with multitudes of those who have gone before us, but also those uh, angels that are around about us. And every time someone came up out of the water, I heard the loudest, craziest celebration, joyful praise you've ever heard in your life. I mean, there was a rumbling and a roaring of a crowd just going crazy over every person that came up out of the water. You think about that. It reminds me of, of Hebrews 12. If you know the passage, it says, therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up. And let us run with endurance the race of God that's been set before us. We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. Because of the joy awaiting him, he endured the cross, disregarding its shame. Now he is seated at the place of honor beside God's throne. You think about that. Every person that comes and gets in this water today, when they come up out of the water, we go crazy. Yeah. We, go, we go crazy <laughs> with celebration and excitement and praise and thanks. We just go nutso. And guess what? We're not alone. There's going to be so many angels joining in as we worship and thank God for the life change because every person that comes up out of that water, they are throwing off. They are stripping off the old life, the old sinful nature, the old things. You don't, you don't understand. You have to see it the way Jesus sees it. When somebody comes up out of that water, they could be throwing off a, a, a pornography addiction. They could be throwing off sexual sins. They could be throwing off greed and lust. They could be throwing off pride and jealousy and envy and all these things that weigh us down and slow us down from the real and life-changing relationship that Jesus has for us. When they come up out of that water, they're different. 
God is saying that that old life has passed away and behold, all has become new. And you can just almost see that, that finish line, that crowd, crowd of witnesses, that, that, that crowd just at the finish line. You can see Jesus in the middle just kind of motioning his fingers saying, come on, come on, come on. Throw off those weights, throw off those weights. Run like you've never run before with boldness and fearlessness. Run that race that I've marked out and that I've set for you because I've set your course. And if it wasn't for me, there would be no finish line. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's because he went to the cross fearlessly, took on your death and my death and shame and punishment and guilt. He took it all on himself and he went to the grave and he destroyed it all. And he was, he was raised again on the third day and he came back to life. Jesus is alive. He's not dead. And because he did that, we have victory only through him. And now we have a finish line. We didn't even have a finish line. Do you understand? We were done. We were done. We had no hope. We had no future. But because of what Jesus did, now we not only have a finish line, but he's waiting there with that great crowd, those witnesses waiting at the finish line saying, come on, come on, come on, run like you've never run before. Amen. You know, we, when we talk about water baptism, you know, there may be some of you here in this place and this is new to you. And so we want to kind of help you understand what is water baptism. Water baptism is an outward expression of what has already taken place on the inside. See, water baptism is not salvation. Salvation is that moment where you surrender your life to Jesus, where you admit that you have fallen short of God's standard, that you need Jesus to come into your life, that you ask him to forgive you of your sins. And that's a moment that's just between you and Jesus. That is just a moment where here at Mountain Movers, we'll dim the lights. We'll ask everybody to close their eyes and bow their heads. Why? Because that's just between you and Jesus and God the Father. That's not between anybody else. But you see, water baptism is something different. Water baptism is the moment where you are standing up loud and proud and going public with your faith. It's the moment where you say, you know what, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ, but I'm going to stand in front of anyone and everyone and declare that I belong to to Jesus. And you know, the very cool thing is anything that Jesus has asked us to do in his word, do you know he did it first? Which I love that. Like, if you're going to tell me to do something, you better do it yourself first. Like, you better set an example. I'm all about that. Well, that's who Jesus was. Man, he went down to the Jordan River and John the Baptist, his cousin, was there baptizing. And he was preparing the way. The Bible tells us that he was preparing the way and he looks up and he sees Jesus and he says, behold, the lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Jesus makes his way down to the Jordan and John begins to have a conversation with him. And I can only imagine the excitement of John as he is introducing basically Jesus to the crowd of people. But then Jesus says, John, I want to be baptized. He's like, no. shoes. I'm not worthy to be baptizing you. You should be baptizing me. But you know what Jesus said? He said, that's not the father's will. The father's will is that I would be baptized, that I would do it first, that I would set the example. Jesus knew what was to come. He knew that he was literally going to lay down his life. He was going to die, be buried, and on the third day, rise again. And you see, the Bible tells us in Romans chapter 6 and verse 4, check this out. It says, for when we die, you and I, we're buried with Christ by baptism. Now, that's not a physical death. That is a spiritual death. That is saying the old man is gone. The moment that you say yes to Jesus, as you go down in that water, as Brad said, what you're doing is the same way Jesus went into that grave. You are going down and you are burying the old man. We're having a funeral today, but the difference is you're going to come back to life. When you come out of that water, brand new life. You see, the enemy wants to hold people bound by their shame and their guilt and their past mistakes and their shortcomings and the things that have happened to them that nobody could have even known about, and yet they still are bound by those things. Things. But guess what? Jesus died to set people free. He said in the rest of that verse, and just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glorious power of the Father, now we also may live new lives. The old has passed away. Behold, all things become new. Today is your day. So many today are going to stand up and go public with their faith. And you know, I believe that in a world that we're living in today, that we are 
the end generation before Jesus returns. And I'm going to tell you right now, guys, we talk about it all the time, but it is time that believers get bold, that you stand up for what you believe in, that you know the word of God, that you stand for the word of God, that you are bold, that you are loud, that you are different. And you know what? This is just your first step. If you've already been baptized, then guess what? You're going to go crazy today for those who are doing it. But you know, when we walk out of this room, God expects us to live loud and proud each and every day, even when people aren't cheering you on for doing the right thing. You know what I'm saying? There's times when you're going to have to do the right thing and nobody's going to cheer you on. But the angels are watching. Jesus is watching. He's saying, go, my kids, go, 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 go. Live bold, be bold, be loud, be proud, be different. Will you bow your heads with me today? We're going to prepare our hearts in this moment for what's about to happen. And maybe you're here today and you've never surrendered your life to Jesus. Maybe you're hearing us talk about all of this and You're like, I believe that there's a God, but I don't really have a relationship with him. I thought it was just religion. Let me tell you, Jesus gave his life so that he could have a relationship with you, not religion. Religion was the rituals. It was just going through the motions. But Jesus died so that he could cover your sins, so that you could boldly come before the throne of God. You could talk to him and he would talk to you. You could go for a stroll like in the garden, like Adam and Eve walked in the cool of the evening with God. That's the kind of beautiful relationship he wants to have with his people. But there's one thing that stands in our way and that's sin. And the Bible clearly says that sin separates us from God. It's the very reason that Jesus left his throne on high. He came to earth 100% man and 100% God. He lived a perfect spotless life and he gave his life in place of ours. He paid the debt that you and I deserve to pay and covered our sins. Because of that, my friend, today, you can call on the name of Jesus Ask him to come into your heart, forgive you of your sins, and you are saved. Your eternity is secure. When Jesus comes back in the clouds to take his church home, you are promised eternity in heaven with God the Father. Today, if you're here in this room, every head bowed, every eye closed, And you don't have a real relationship with Jesus, but you're ready to surrender. You're ready for that. You want that in your life. I'm gonna ask you just to slip your hand up in the air. I'm the only one looking around. I wanna pray over you today. If you're online and you were ready to make that decision, just type all in. I see your hands. Amen, I see your hands. The best decision I ever made in my life was when I said yes to Jesus. When I died to my old self, my old desires, when I realized that God had created me for a purpose and a plan and I began to align my life with his, I came alive. Church, will you pray with me today? Just repeat this simple prayer with me as those today are making the greatest decision of their life. Just say, dear Jesus, I believe that you came from heaven to earth, that you lived a perfect spotless life and you died to take my place. I ask that you would forgive me of my sins, come into my heart. I wanna live for you, Jesus, the rest of my life. In your name we pray, amen.